Hello everyone and welcome to another live edition of The Sewing Report. I'm Jennifer Moore, your host, and we do this every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. So feel free to come back and join us anytime. So in this episode, we are going to be talking about sewing skills. What you got versus what you want. What sewing skills are you most proud of? What would you like to learn? And I will also be showing some photos later on from a uh, little field trip I had earlier this week to a dollhouse and miniature store. I'm pretty excited. And yes, I may do some videos about dollhouses in the future. So if you're into that sort of thing, which I've gotten a lot of people saying, yes, I love minis, I love dollhouses. Well, uh, I, I have ordered a kit. So let's get started. Well, first of all, I want to share the poll results from last week. So last week I asked you guys, uh, how many UFOs do you have? Unfinished objects. So here are the results. So 52% uh, or 11 of you have one to three unfinished projects. 23% or five of you said four to seven. 14% or three said, said uh, 11 or more. Wow. Woo, that's uh, you guys. You guys have a lot of uh, sewing in the works, huh? And 9% or 2 said 8 to 10. And interestingly, no one said they had zero UFOs. So at least I feel a little bit less alone in that pretty much everyone has UFOs. So this is an interesting way first, I don't know, just to gauge like where everyone's at and uh, find some interesting information. So don't forget to take this week's poll question. This week's poll question, just click on the I in the right hand corner of your screen. And the poll question is, how would you rate your uh, sewing skill level? Anywhere from beginner, like I don't know anything, to professional, like I do this for a living, I'm legit. So feel free to participate and uh, we will be revealing the results two weeks from now. So I don't, I don't like to skip weeks, but next week I'm going to be visiting some family. So I will not be here live, but... I will be posting a video on Sunday and hello to everyone watching or if you're watching the replay, welcome also. So anyways, let's get into the topic. So I I would consider myself more of an advanced, like advanced beginner. I don't even know if I'm intermediate level, but I'm sort of one of those jack of all trade types where I like doing lots of different types of sewing and quilting. So I've done a little bit of certain things. I even took a long arm quilting class, which was fun. And I, real, I realized, like, how difficult it was and how, like, sucky my quilting was. Like, how sucky my drawing was with the uh, quilting handles. But, you know, whatever. But let's talk about what, what, like, sewing skills have you learned that you're, like, most proud of. Like, maybe you were able to tackle buttonholes or uh, someone on uh, Facebook mentioned they wanted to really get better at zippers. I, I think for me by probably one of the skills I'm best at is top stitching. I think my top stitching is pretty decent and I'm getting better at binding quilts by machine. Uh, so it doesn't look soup. So it looks okay and I don't have to hand bind them. Another thing I would like to learn though is better handwork on garments. I have a craftsy class um, about like couture dressmaking finishes. It was an Allison Smith class and if you're not familiar with Craftsy there is a link below if you are interested. But I uh, purchased this class and I would kind of watch it as I was going to sleep. I don't know it was just kind of soothing. And she teaches you techniques you know like uh, doing the catch stitch on hems and I would like to really I really need to actually watch some of those classes more but I would like to get better at hand work when finishing garments. I think that's one thing that I would, I'm really interested in doing. Um, for a while, a couple of years ago, I actually bought some upholstery equipment and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, maybe start doing some upholstery. And I bought like a chair off of some website, like a, like a used chair, bought a couple of them. And uh, let's just say it didn't, it didn't work out too well. I, I don't know what my problem was, but I never really ended up able a, being able to master anything in upholstery. Uh, so I still have a bunch of tools and maybe now that I've got more time, maybe I'll dabble with that. We also need more space. Um, we do have a garage here at our, our apartment, so I could do some things, but you know, I don't know. All right, so let's get some comments up here. Let's see what you guys are saying. All right, we've got, got quite a few folks here. Hello, everybody. Hello. All right. 
Brittany, I quilted a table runner on my sewing machine. I just started sewing in November. Love it. Yay. Welcome, Brittany. Okay, Maggie says she enjoys top stitching as well. Yeah, and she had a good point. The difference from a year, from just a year is amazing. It's one of those skills that practice makes perfect. And it really does. And someone asked me a question on the channel on one of the videos saying, you know, I have all of the equipment. I bought a sewing machine. I have patterns. I fabric. But I just haven't, I, I, she was saying she had a hump in getting started. Like, so she was just having trouble, like, actually doing it. And I think that's the thing that would help her is, is just actually doing it. Even if you're not very good at it, just try it. I was playing around with some serger stitches this week, and I've been sharing some of my stuff on Instagram. And that's the one thing I would say is that you just need to actually, you just need to actually do it. So instead, you know, you can watch all the YouTube videos, you can look at blogs, you can read tutorials or books, but I would say just jump in and try it and just know, again, your first time probably isn't going to be perfect, but keep going. Uh, kind of like how I probably need to play around with the sale rate machine. I'm, pro I'm hardcore procrastinating on that too. I have a sale rate sign machine. I think I've tried to use it once and I've owned it for well over a year. So I need to... I could definitely practice what I'm preaching here too. Um, but so there's a few serger stitches that I was meaning to try, like the narrow rolled hem stitch, the flat lock stitch, and then using the, I didn't even realize it came with a ruffle or foot, but the serger actually did come with it. So I tried out all three of those techniques this week and I was able to do it pretty easily. I found the book with all the tension settings and just set them as recommended. And it worked out pretty good. So now I could do like cool hems on, uh, you know, lightweight fabrics. So stuff like that. So I think, you know, that's that's the whole key, I think, is just doing and doing it over and over and over again. Sort of like how I think you, you guys have probably seen that those articles. And I think there was a book about like mastering anything in 10,000 hours. I mean, I would imagine if you did anything for that long, you'd probably be okay at it over time. I don't know. But, all right, let's see what you guys are saying. Fabric order, I take a sewing class once a week, and I'm learning the proper way to do things. I'm mainly self-taught, and my sewing teacher says I have bad habits. All right, fabric order, what kind of, what, so what kind of stuff is she calling you out on? Like, what sort of, what sort of bad habits is she saying you shouldn't do? I'm, I'm just curious. And here's one thing I do have to say about that is, yes, there are better ways to do things, but I, I do... I do find it a little cringy when I see more experienced seamstresses or sewists constantly telling new beginners that they're doing something wrong or that, you know, their way, you know, sucks or whatever. Because um, I think that's a little bit discouraging. So maybe there are ways that they can, that, you know, if you are an experienced seamstress, maybe there's like a kinder, gentler way for you to say, hey, you know what, that way is working for you, but... You know, this way it might save you time or it might be a little bit easier and, you know, less frustrating for you. I think there's just ways of doing it with kindness rather than doing it with like, I know better, like kind of an I know better than you attitude. So I don't know. All right, we got Rachel. I did my first overlap zipper. Woohoo! All right, and uh, Tony took a f free motion quilting class and is trying to learn Trapunto. Very cool. Doherty, yes, uh, there's there's a bit of a uh, there's a bit of a whirlwind going on on the table, so I I'm gonna make a video about these projects. I'm I'm working on that. I'm shooting some stuff, uh, but yeah, I've been I've been pretty busy. It's a little bit messy, and I didn't really get a chance to clean up. But uh, last night I was sewing at 3 a.m. So and watching the show. Currently, I'm watching the show Monk on Amazon Prime Video. So if you enjoy the show, definitely uh, check it out. It's a great great show. I'm on season seven currently, and uh, yeah, I kind of watch that or s like if I'm doing computer work, if I'm doing something on the computer that doesn't require me to hear, I'll watch Skillshare classes or Craftsy classes or something instructional. But when you're sewing, you're kind of far away and you're concentrating on that. So I find I can't watch instructional videos really while I'm doing that. So I just have to watch something purely for entertainment. All right. Sherry recommends how to start sewing by assemble books. That is very cool. Okay. And uh, Amber is doing some free motion quilting. All right. Okay. Um, 
you know, Michelle, the serger actually came. So I have the Brother 1034D. And if you're interested, it, um, I've got some links to it below. And it did come with three feet. It came with a regular foot. It came with a blind hem foot. And I didn't even realize what this third foot was, but apparently it's a ruffler foot. So I tried it out and it actually worked okay. So that was that was cool. I, I did not realize it came with that. I think there's some other optional feet too. I can't remember the names of them. But there's some other stuff you can do with the, with the serger if you'd like. Uh, so that was pretty cool. All right. Fabricator, okay, so you're touch. So Fabricator is is taking some classes with the sewing teacher, who sa who she says is calling her out on some quote unquote bad habits. She makes me spend an, the entire hour pinning on my pattern. She is really okay. So she's obviously more of like the OG seamstress. Okay, got it. And Empress Noel, my favorite is an applique wall hanging. It was my first and sadly my only. Definitely want to keep trying. I just found Celtic Circles. That is next. All right. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, Vic. As long as you get a good outcome, don't hurt yourself. Who cares? You know what? That's... I, here's my thing, too. I think as long as you're having fun. Like, it, say you're, you know, like... Say you were taking a class and something and the instructor was just a total buzzkill you wouldn't be enjoying it. You wouldn't be having any fun. And that's the whole point of sewing is to make things and enjoy doing it along the way. So as long as you can get to that point, you know, that I don't care what method somebody uses. And I don't know, I'm just, I, I'm just not the type to be like, you know, my way is better. I don't know. So who knows? All right. And Vic says, try watching Anne or Anne with an E. It's a Canadian classics. So it's about, is it, is that the one that's about Anne of Avonlea? Is that it? I don't know, a bit dark at times. Yes. Yeah, some, some, what's up with some shows can be a little bit like her. I have trouble watching those. Like I like the, I don't know. I just tend to gravitate towards com comedy, I guess more. I don't know. All right. Sewing True 100. Best tip for sewing. Wash your hands. Yes. You don't want to get your project. Uh, dirty and in fact sometimes I if I'm working with a light colored fabric and I'm really worried about it I will actually scotch guard the fabric so I'll, I'll lay out the whole fab piece of fabric and then I'll treat it with scotch guard um, sometimes on both sides too and then uh, that I find that actually does like I find that legitimately does help because I'd worked with a few projects and I was using white fabric or like cream fabric and as I was working on the quilt, I just kept noticing these random marks on it. Like, I don't know how they got on there. It was obviously some sort of dirt. Um, so I ended up having to, like, try to, like, tide stain stick it, you know. But with the, when I scotch guarded, it actually did seem, seem to help repel those types of marks, I guess. Uh, I do have a video on that that I did, like, a long time ago. Uh, so it's, it's one of the earlier videos, plus I look sort of bloated in it. But if you're interested, there is a video about, about pre-treating fabric. All right, we've got... Is Michelle, all the feet that fit the 1034D will fit the 92090. All right, Michelle, yeah. So you already have one, very cool. And Joe is working on English paper piecing, yay. I've done, a, like I've made some hexagons, but I haven't really done hardcore paper piecing. Like, English paper piecing. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. But anyways, uh, oh, and I want to show you guys some photos. Let's see here. Actually, we'll, we'll wait until a little bit later. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Um, what, so what sewing skill, what sewing skill do you really want to learn but feel is going to be really challenging for you? I think that's, and, and that's the thing, like, we all have different things we want to learn. I'm just curious to see what everyone, what everyone thinks, like, a sewing skill that you are, like, that would be so awesome to know how to do, or you're really impressed when you see someone else doing it, but it's something you feel you can't do or is going to be very challenging. So, but yes. And Doherty says, I teach sewing and I really try to encourage my class. And I think that's the way to do it, is that you can't be... I don't know, like if you're kind of, if you're an instructor and you're not really like a positive uplifting person, like that's not going to be good for, I just can't see that being good for the students or, you know, helping them to enjoy and love sewing. All right. All right. Zoe says Hong Kong finish. That looks pretty cool. That does look cool. 
Um, you know, and I have seen some tutorials on it. I forgot, I forgot where I saw it, but I was looking at one the other day. And uh, Kirsten, I might try Scotch Guard on an ivory faux leather eyelet coat. Ooh, very cool, very cool. Now, if it, I will say, Kirsten, if it's something that's like not like faux leather is not very porous, it, I don't know if it would work. I'm not really sure if it would work on that. But I noticed the Scotch Guard will work on anything that's like, like a woven, you know, like a like a cotton woven or like a linen or anything that, you know, will absorb stuff. And uh, Joe, okay, Maggie wants to says jeans are very intimidating. I have not tried jeans either, and uh, that does maybe that's something I could try with the sale, right? I also have a vintage singer that I need to bust out and try to use a little bit more often that I haven't. Um, but my husband made jeans on that machine, and it worked pretty well. All right. Brittany, I didn't want to learn to sew garments until I started watching this channel, so now I want to learn to do that, and I'm kind of scared. Brittany, don't be scared. Uh, if anyone has any tips for Brittany, feel free to weigh in. I would say start with something very simple. Maybe a, a good beginner project for, like, just sort of something you could wear. Maybe a scarf, like an infinity scarf. Or if you're going to do clothing, do like a do like a really simple skirt, like a, you know, maybe one with an elastic waistband. Um, I made one, there was like a tutorial from Noodlehead that was like a, it had elastic only in the back, so the front you couldn't see it. Um, but like a gathered skirt is a really good easier project for you to get started on or something like a scarf. And Empress Noelle, I purchased the Couture Sewing. On Craftsy, I've made a few jackets now, and I've since made my finally found my swing coat. I want to learn the fuss bits like tailored tacks. That is a good yes. That would be cool. And so true. Use leftover soap instead of tailored ch tailor's chalk, especially if the fabric marks. That's a good tip. Obviously, for machine washable fabrics, that's a good one though. And Joe would like to learn free motion quilting. Uh, Empress Noelle, I like that. She suggests Brittany start with pajama pants. I think that would be a good project for you too. And there's a lot of tutorials where you don't really need a pattern. Plus, pajama pants are pretty loose fitting. So really, you could get away with doing it, I think, with your maybe just your waist measurement. Um, another thing, there was a free pattern. It's the, um, I'll find a link. It's the Pearl Soho Gym Shorts. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good beginner pattern, I think. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can find that. Pearl. It's the City Gym Shorts, and they're pretty... They're pretty... I would say this is a pretty easy project, and they have versions for kids and adults. So you can make them... And they're really cute, too. They have a little bit of bias binding, but they're really um, quite cute. And I love how they use the Liberty of London fabrics. I think those are really adorable. Jackie... From Maryland, hello! I would love to be better at pattern alterations and fitting. Yes, that's, yeah, that's something I need. Yeah, that's definitely on my list too. Oh, that stuff. And there's entire books about pattern fitting. I just, isn't it kind of funny? We, there's so much to know and there's just not enough time to do it in. So, I mean, we could spend our entire lives just learning new things about, and that's what I like about sewing and quilting is that there's, there's never a point when you are done learning. There's always something else you can know. All right. And uh, Terry says, yeah, she agrees with the pajama pants. Okay. Howard would like to do a really professional camp shirt collar. Okay. Oh, but a tip from Barbara. A big tip for jeans is if the pressure foot tilts, add a folded piece of jean scrap under the back of the presser, presser foot to balance it. That's a good one. And uh, Michelle says, I really want to learn how to grade up a pattern and proper fit. To yes. So a lot of people want to learn better pattern alterations and fittings. So I think that's a really good thing to know. All right. I keep trying to comment with my Pearl Soho gym shorts, but uh, it's not let. This is not letting me for some reason. I don't know. Anyways, uh, look up Pearl Soho, P-U-R-L, city gym shorts, and you will find them. For some reason, it's not. I can't comment on my own live stream, which is sort of weird. I don't know. That's kind of funny. All right, Pearl. Let me see if I can at least write it out. Soho City Gym Shorts. Okay. But I like the tip from Barbara, so definitely, that's definitely a good one. Okay, and Vic says, I'm excited to learn free motion quilting now that I've got my skyline. Yay! So you, Vic, did you, you, got it, you got it from the store now? That's great, because I remember you saying it was, it was 
being held for you. So I'm glad you have it now. All right, we got a couple people saying they want to learn to quilt. Wonderful. And Thorsten, I want to start. I want to start to sew this week. Yay! And I begin with dish towels. From there, I want to go to clothing. That's a really good thing, and I think a dish towel would be a really good project. Very simple. You just need to sew straight lines or straightish lines, and it's something where you can make them, and it helps you practice your sewing techniques. So you're practicing, but you also get something you can use out of it, or you can gift. Kirsten wants to learn machine embroidery for it. Yay. And, uh, okay, Barbara, it's the domestic machines. Not that good. Some machines keep pulling out the needle. That's a good tip. All right. And, uh, okay, for alterations, check out the Nancy Zeman book. YouTube won't let me copy and paste. Yes, that I'm having trouble putting in links as well. And this is my own channel. So apparently I cannot link anything either in the comments. All right, uh, Doherty likes sew for home with cute aprons and pillows and bags. Oh, that sounds cool. And you know, I saw, um, so I got, actually, let me grab this real quick. I got this catalog. This is one of the few catalogs I get in the mail. It's Connecting Threads. I've ordered from them before. I, um, I ordered some thread from Connecting Threads. And uh, they had some inspiration projects in here that I think might be good too. So, they were advertising this new line of fabric. So, Connecting Threads is basically sort of like a uh, more reason, like their cotton, their quilting cotton is, is very reasonably priced and they do their own in-house. They do their own in-house designs, so it costs less. Um, also, I noticed in the catalog that they were starting to offer, I guess, uh, more premium quilting cotton, which is cool. Uh, but they have this page in it with... Uh, and it looks like all of these, or it looks like most of these patterns are free. But let me show you this. So they had some patterns you can get on the website. So not only can you order fabric, but you can also order and order uh, get these free patterns. Um, but they had this lunch bag that looked pretty fun, and I was actually gonna look that up. So it's this free lunch bag pattern, and it looks like it's easy. So these are all easy. There's also a uh, magic pillowcase pattern and then this charming fun baby quilts that's a free pattern and then let's see here so yeah wait okay and then i think this one might be free too but it, uh they're wet i'm i'm i was actually going to check out their website because the free patterns actually looked pretty promising so if you are very new i think this magic this magic pillowcase pattern might be a good one to try out pillowcases are pretty easy they don't require a ton of fabric and they're good for gifts yeah aren't the aren't the patterns adorable the the penguins i love them and i really liked this table like you can get this table runner kit and i really liked like are the, I, it looks like the penguins are wearing like artists berets or something so this line is called penguins love colors by sarah aspinall i just think they're kind of they're kind of cute but i really liked the uh I really like the magic pillowcase pattern. It probably uses the burrito method. And then the lunch bag. I was actually going to see, um, I'm seeing some. So before I go visit my family next week, I'm trying to sew some gifts for people. So the stuff behind me, like the pink pro the pink fabric, that is for my stepdad's mother and her and my stepdad's uh, dad. Um, so I made them and I'm, I'm trying to get a video to get I kind of tape my process along the way So I'm trying to make them I made them a table runner and then some placemats I had a bit of a snag with the placements and the table runner um, But but you know, it'll it'll happen. All right, Vic. All right My husband paid it off for my birthday and our anniversary as a surprise. Yay. Oh best husband ever All right, Terry recommends McCall's learn to sew for fun Yes, so that's a good one. All right, and okay, Empress Noel, I would love to design fabric. I want to research how to get that done. You know, Empress Noel, on, when I was on Skillshare, I noticed they had quite a few classes for designers, like how to do designs in Illustrator, how to, you know, get them onto Spoonflower. So if you are interested, um, Skillshare offers a lot of like subscription, like a, I got a three month subscri subscription for 99 cents. You can, if you just Google like Skillshare promotions, you should find some sort of promo code. But they had a lot of like 
classes just on how to do that sort of thing. Designing isn't quite my thing, so I, I wasn't I wasn't really gonna watch them, but they were the, there were definitely quite a few of them, and they had quite a few classes that were done by fabric designers. So that might be a good place to do it pretty cheaply and learn more about it. All right, and Barbara, quilting cotton is great for aprons. I find it protects clothes better and lasts longer. Yay! All right, Madonna. Wow, we have so many Madonna in here. Hello, Madonna. Are you are you the Madonna? Okay, I think you have a different last name, but very cool. And you're learning bags. Okay, Michelle says she likes the Patty Palmer books. Yes, a Palmer plutch fit for real people and knits for real people. You know, I have, Michelle, I have those classes. I haven't watched all of them, but I did email. I got an email a while back from Patty and her daughter, Melissa Watson, and Melissa designs for McCall's. And uh, she was just sending me a really nice email about how she likes that I'm trying to encourage people to sew. And uh, we had a, we exchanged some emails and she was just super, she was super nice. I just, I really liked both her and her daughter. I thought they were very, very cool people. Um, so in fact, now that I mentioned that, now that you've got them in my mind, I might reach out to them to see if maybe they'll do a sewing chat. Um, so I'm trying to line up, I'm trying to get some folks on here to do a uh, like a pre-recorded just sewing like kind of an interview but more of a chat with people who sew just just to kind of learn more about what what they're into and have it so it's not just me all the time but uh, I'm trying to get that together um, when I get back from this trip hopefully I'll be able to work on that more but I would love to you know just chat with people about what kind of how they got into sewing what kind of things they like doing what inspires them and more about their their sewing process just to see what other people think. All right, I'm gonna get a drink of water real quick. Hold on a second. Wow, I'm so thirsty. And I have to confess, I got on the scale before the show today. And uh, yeah, it's not looking good. It's not looking good for Jen. So I got to drink more. I need to drink more water and exercise. Yeah, I think I think that's the lesson I learned. Um, my stomach is not, my waistline is not in a good place right now. So I really need to try to, to get some sort of proportion down there because it's, it's not happening. It's not happening. Um, but yeah, so in Melissa, I emailed with both her and Patty. So maybe I could have them on both separately. I don't know if they live in the same city. I think, I think Melissa lives in like New York and I, I got the vibe Patty might not like, might live in a different state. Um, but I, you know, we emailed a while ago. Like quite a while ago, but I would love to just talk to people who, you know, maybe I've come into contact with and just have, uh, you know, do things. Oh, Kirsten, I'm supposed to have lunch with Patty. Oh, she, but yeah, we emailed a while back and she was so, she was so sweet um, and just nice. And both her and Melissa, I just thought were really just neat, neat ladies. Um, so yeah, I, I think when I get back from the trip, I'm going to try, trip, I'm going to try to email them and see if they would be willing to. Um, and it would basically, the chat would look kind of like this. You know, like me on one screen and then I'm, then I'm on the other screen. And we would just kind of chat. So I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, but I know Patty does some workshops um, a couple times a year. I think it's in like Wash. I want to, they have like a, I think a couple, to, I, sorry, forgive me. I am spacing on the locations. I think one of them is in Washington State. Because I was thinking to myself, if they were closer, I would try to go. And then Susan Calje, I have her couture dress sewing class and she has a few workshops every year too on really couture sewing so that's something I think that would be on my bucket list for things to do is to spend some time learning from someone with that skill level because um, I think that's one of the things that one of the reasons that you can really learn is by just by doing and by learning from people who know and I I will you know I was saying this earlier so my, when I grew up, my grand, so my grandparents, I'm adopted and my grandparents are German. And some of their, they had this uh, couple that was, that was close friends. And uh, the wife, her name was Elsa and she had a bridal shop. And I knew her when I was a little girl, like they were friends, they were, they were friends their entire lives basically. And uh, as my grandfather, his health declined, um, they would help him. Like, he kind of hired them, like, to, to basically help him with, you know, household, with things he couldn't do, you know, like, picking up things or, you know, just taking him places because he was in a wheelchair. But uh, I really regret, as an adult, not 
like I, I didn't really have an interest in in garment sewing at the time. You know, I started out a little probably a lot later than some of you. Uh, but I, I really regret not taking up, like, I'm sure if I'd asked Elsa to learn from her, I'm sure she probably would have said, yeah, definitely. And I could have really learned, learned from her. She owned a bridal shop. She did alterations and she sewed quite a bit. And I really, really regret not taking an opportunity to learn more about what she did and, you know, gotten a chance to maybe have her be like sort of a mentor. Um, I don't, I think she, I don't know if she's, I'm not even sure if she's still alive. I'm not, I haven't, it's been quite a while, probably about 20 years since I've seen them, 15, 20 years. Um, but she was definitely like a permanent, one of the fixtures in my life as a kid was, you know, Hans and Elsa. Um, they were very nice and they really did a lot for my grandparents. So, but it's just one of those things where I look back and I'm like, you know, she knew so much and I really could have. I just really could have learned from her and, and, you know, had the, had the opportunity because that would have been pretty cool. But, you know, as a kid, you don't, you don't know those things and you don't understand what, you don't understand what a great gift it is. So that's something I, I do regret. Okay. And we've got some more comments. Uh, okay. Maggie says she tried a duct tape DIY dress form and it did not work well. I got a uniquely you form and love, love, love it. Okay, so Sewing True is asking about making their own dress form. Yes, I've seen those tutorials as well. They they did they do look kind of daunting. I have not tried them. Um, yes, uh, Vic Elsa was a very cool lady. I do. I need to l look her up and see. You know, I don't. I think they were a little bit younger than my and both of my grandparents have passed away years ago. Um, but they were friends. They were all German and they were part of like a German community in Western New York. Um, but yeah, they were all, you know, and we would all go, like we would do things like during the summer, they, they, we would go to their like little German community and play like bingo and stuff. And uh, they would eat, like I remember the whole place smelled a lot like Limburger cheese because that was one of the things and they would eat sauerkraut and, you know, do some polka, di like there was like honestly polka. Um, <laughs> yeah, some good memories there. All right, sewing true. I have an '80s pattern I want to make. It's not to wear. The pattern says advanced, and would be great to sew as a sewing challenge. You should totally go for it. Okay, Empress Noel. I was mid '40s before I started. Okay, now I feel a little bit, a little bit better, a little bit better here. What I want to show you guys. So this week I mentioned in in the last show that I was uh, I was starting to really start like research the miniatures world. And I didn't realize it was this whole like subgroup. Like there's a whole, like just how we're into sewing, there's a whole other group just for people that are into miniatures. I joined a couple Facebook groups. I went to a store and I found that there's like a miniature society in Atlanta. So I'm kind of interested in going, going to a meeting. I did order this uh, little DIY kit. It's a very like beginner. It's not beginner, but it's like not like, like, all the pieces come with, like, it's not like one of those, like, basic dollhouses kit. It's sort of like a minis kit, and everything comes in it, like, the accessories and stuff. But uh, I went to the store this week called uh, Miniatures, Miniature Designs in Lawrenceville, Georgia. And uh, they said they're one of, they're basically, like, the second largest hobby shop in the world, which was very cool. And I had a good time, so I wanted to show you guys some photos Okay, so this is the outside, but check out the inside. Yeah, so this is the sort of stuff they had. It was insane. And uh, I, you know, this stuff, like some of this stuff is just a work of like, it's true artisan work, like making all these tiny things and the quality and authenticity of some of these things are amazing. So I was very impressed by this. But let me show you some more photos. Okay, so this is... Okay, so somebody made like a replica of like a like a pub, which was very and all this stuff looks real. Like if you took up a if you took a close up photo, you would think it was like the actual, you'd think it was the actual thing, but it's not. Um, so that was pretty cool. All right, so let me show. Okay, so this is more for. Okay, so I wanted to take a picture of this because it was like little pet stuff. So notice they've got like little dogs and cats. The cats were adorable. They even have one of those cat, they a couple, have a couple cat trees, which I thought was kind of neat and a scratching post for the cat. And I feel like the cat, po the cat uh, tree is something maybe you could try to DIY. 
So I was watching a lot of tutorials about building these things and about DIY stuff. And I was very, I was just very intrigued. So I think that's something that I might, I uh, might try to do. Um, so we'll see. And then this is one of the houses that they, they do. So they have a lot of kits and um they have some samples in the store like mo they literally have model homes like the stuff they had there it was incredible and you could either buy them pre-assembled or you could buy the kits you put it together yourself they had paint they had everything they had carpeting they sold like carpeting for the houses and it was just a really cool place and i was very glad i decided to do it. i thought it was a really neat experience so yes so if you are ever in Atlanta and you're in, into minis or you're into dollhouses, this store was a real treat. It's in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and it's called Miniature Designs. They also have a website. And uh, another place uh, I saw some stuff was on miniatures.com. And then there was another website. It's, this is where I got my kit. It's called Bang. I know it's called Banggood, which sounds weird. Um, but I ordered a kit. It's coming from like China, so it'll probably take like a month to get here. But I'm kind of excited to try that out, and uh, so I've decided I, I've decided that I will put the dollhouse stuff on this channel, and I wanted to kind of talk about why. So, when I originally started this channel, I guess in hindsight I should have branded it more as like maybe like my name or something that lended itself a little more to, to other types of content. But I think. I have a couple channels. I've got like this one. I've got one that's about the media industry called XTV Producer. Obviously, I can't put Dollhouse stuff on there. And then I've got another channel about, um, you know, Gen Talks River. And that's more for like personal stuff. I've been talking about money and real estate over there and some other silly things. But I think the crafts, anything craft related would fall more into this channel. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know what? If someone is into dollhouses but not necessarily sewing, maybe they would find videos and come over here and maybe also think the sewing stuff is cool. So hopefully people are cool with that. If not, though, I'm I'm still gonna go ahead and do it anyways. So um, I may okay. It's this is not gonna be an all the time sort of thing, but I occasionally I will put some some stuff that's in the same like realm. Yeah of the sewing community but may not be specifically sewing uh, so i just wanted to let you guys know but uh, i'm i'm pretty excited about uh about doing about exploring some dollhouse stuff because you know even though i'm an adult i've been wanting to build a dollhouse since i was a little girl never had the chance so i figured you know why why not now you know yes so anyways i got a couple comments okay uh, the history terp i am i'm in western new york yay For, between rochester and buffalo fellow vra fam too yay very cool where okay yes yeah, so i grew up in lancaster but i have uh some relatives still in like batavia and some other places too uh jackie i understand how you feel have an elderly aunt who was a seamstress and did alterations for the military wish i'd taken advantage of all i could have learned from her while we were both much younger yeah, and, and you know what, though? I think that just goes to you being a kid, too. You just don't know what you're going to be interested in. And you change so much between childhood and adulthood. I think just what you're into and, like, what kind of person you are. I, you know, I didn't really like myself very much in the tw in my 20s. So, um, Empress Noelle, my mom finally getting her dollhouse. Yay, now I'm going nuts for all the cute stuff. I already have mini treadle sewing machine. We still have to build the house. Yay! All right, and uh, yes, Brittany, you're also doll. So that's the thing, like the people, just from the feedback I got from talking about it last week, people that are into sewing, a lot of them are also into dollhouses. So um, I think anything that kind of has an int like a general association, and I want to try to like take some of the stuff from the kit and maybe use my own fabric or customize walls. I might use my some of my fabric stash to decorate the house. So that's where I think it could fall into the same sort of category, at least. And the other thing is that, like, you know, like, if you're into sewing but not dollhouses, maybe you would, maybe I could help you guys discover an interest in that. Or the other way around, if someone's coming to the channel for a craft project that I post, maybe they would check out the sewing videos as well and say, hey, this looks sort of cool. And that goes back to the whole goal of the channel, which is to encourage people to sew. So... I think I'm I'm definitely going to 
to do that. So hopefully you guys are cool with it. But if not, I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. And and I think that just also reflects on the fact that, you know, my my interests are are pretty wide ranging. So I don't know. And all right, we've got Vic. We don't know what we have until it's gone, though my nan and pop didn't. So I wish I'd asked them more questions about their life. Well, isn't that the truth? You really, you really do. All right, and sewing in trifocals, Allison. I started sewing in home ec classes in junior high and high school over in the 1970s. Over the years, the Singer how-to books and lately sewing with Nancy DVDs and books and YouTube vids have helped. Yay! Oh, wow. Okay. My great-grandfather, so history chart, my great-grandfather emigrated from Germany in the 1870s and was a tailor in Buffalo. Very neat. My mother was super talented and crafty and taught me to sew when I was young and have been doing so ever since. All right, you're in, Cas is it Castile? Only 30 to 40, 40, 35 to 40 minutes from Batavia. Very, very neat. Very cool. All right, Marie, I'm not into dollhouses, but would definitely love to learn how to make doll clothes. And that's the thing, like, I would be, I would be interested in that too. And one of the reasons I think is because I think you can really, like, with doll clothes or with baby clothes or kids clothes, you can really go all out on the outfit and you're not using tons of fabric and... Like, there's a lot less of a, there's a bit of a less, like, of a material, like, a, a material investment. So, I think doing dollhouse clothes would be neat. I would just need to actually get a doll so I could, like, you know, I know my husband would be like, why are you buying dolls? But, you know, I would obviously need one to try to replicate some, make some clothing for them. Um, sort of like I would, it would be hard for me to design baby outfits because I don't have a physical baby here. Um, but with dolls, at least you can, and it's not like a crazy thing um, to have like me having a baby. So, um, yeah, Empress Noel, the house does need curtains, bedding, rugs, quilts, clothes, and the clotheslines. Yes, exactly. Oh, oh Doherty says, uh, I'm really into Jane Austen and in Bath, there was a really cute store with a dollhouse. Yay. And, you know, I was reading this article about dollhouses, and it was saying that it was just talking about how, like, how the interest in dollhouses is more than just that and then they were talking about i guess uh i think it was jane austen she designed a dollhouse and then it was later i think it was jane austen she sold it or was it charlotte bronte i forget it was one of those people let me see it might it was either charlotte bronte or it was jane austen they designed a dollhouse yeah okay so Char it was Charlotte Bronte. She had worked as like a governess or something and, and she decorated a dollhouse and then the dollhouse is still around and it was up for auction. So that was kind of a neat story. But I think dollhouses, I just really like seeing the how through time kids' toys change. Um, I've gone on a few of those really neat historic home tours and I always love seeing how these people lived, what kind of stuff they were into, like what colors were popular at the time, what patterns. And I especially love looking at the children's items, like what kind of beds were in style, what sort of toys were designed for them. And I just think that's a really neat, neat thing to do. And uh, Kate, I come to sewing YouTube channels for inspiration. That's exactly it. So I think even though it's called the sewing report, this channel is called the sewing report, I do think I will branch out a little bit and do some crafty stuff. Just because someone that is someone that's interested in crafts might not necessarily sew, but maybe they would come over and be like, you know what, that actually looks pretty neat. So maybe I will try to do it. All right, uh, Doherty, my excuse for sewing for dolls and having dolls is that I didn't get enough when I was a child. Yes, I'm gonna use that same excuse. All right, I am waiting for sewing and trifocals to show bra sewing. Her expl explanations and demonstrations are easy to follow. Yay! And Angelica, you inherited your grandmother's sewing machine and serger. Very cool. Um, you know, Doherty, you can, although I'm, the, you definitely can, although the uh, uh, YouTube might not let you link it. We'll, we'll see. Uh, it wouldn't even let me link, like, a link to the Pearl Soho Gym Shorts. Uh, but you can say the name for the Facebook page. Like, maybe give the name of the page so people can find it. All right, and we got... Uh, Allison, my mom sewed most of my clothes as a kid and it embarrassed me. Now I'm learning that homemade clothes are usually a better, a better quality and unique. Yeah. And I, that's the thing. I don't think kid, you can't expect kid. You don't be so hard on yourself because kids just don't understand that. Um, you just really don't start to get it until you're older. 
By seventh grade, I was sewing all of my clothes. I also have a floor loom and table loom, and I love weaving. Very neat. Watching the fabric made before my eyes is fascinating. All right, so I'm going to... Let's go ahead and we will show uh, some of your photos. Let's see here. All right, so I, I was going through the Sewing Report Squad hashtag. So if you would like your photo to be featured on a future show, feel free to feel free to use the hashtag. And I'm going to go through and uh, just look through some photos, hopefully, in most shows. Okay. All right. So the first photo is by Britt Moose. My fabric haul from Hobby Lobby and Joann's. Most of it came through the remnant section. Yay! Very nice haul there. Uh, Melita Quilts. Wow! Holy cow! She finished all of those? All of the quilts are finally finished. Goal for 2018. Don't make so many quilt tops. <laughs> That's awesome. Harry, right, how many? There's like, how many of them are here? One, two. All right, one. I see like this thing on the top. That might be a project. I don't know. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Is this 17? I don't even know. That's that's a lot. Well, wow. All right, kudos to that. All right, this is the uh, Sewing Padawan. A lot of firsts. First sew of the year. First time hacking a pattern. First time doing a blind stip he stitch hem on the serger. Excited to see how it turns out once I add the bands. Okay, so she is making, it looks like a nursing tank. Very cool. I have never personally had a need for those, but I've I've seen that lots of moms seem to really want uh, nursing friendly clothing. Very cool. All right, we've got. Oh my gosh, look at this. All right, who's that little guy? All right, it says uh, made Kobe Kobe Joe bow tie version one from scrap fabric. Oh, look at that little guy. He looks like he's enjoying the bow tie though. You know. Oh, how adorable. That's from JSTAR376. Alright, alright, another one, Melita. Okay, so this is Melita, this is Melita before she finished all the quilts. <laughs> Today's project is to get finished binding and labels on as many as possible. Wow. You've been really been plugging away there, Melita. Alright, that's from me. This is Vic, here we go, final. Alright, let me like that. Final squares pieced together. I just moved a few things around. So this is one of your new projects with the skyline. And you're making a log cabin quilt from Batiks. Very cool looking. All right. We got Brit Moose again. Chain piecing half square triangles for my quilt while watching old episodes of The Sewing Report live. Woo! All right. Well, I, I'm glad somebody's watching. Thank you. Thank you for that. And it looks like you, you, got, some, you got some beverage refreshments here. Hey, you got to stay hydrated. Very neat. All right, another one for Vic. Okay, this is another photo of her her log cabin quilt, and she's trying to keep the cats off of that. You know, and that's the thing. When you put anything on the floor, the cats just want to immediately go on it. What They want to put their little butt on there and, I don't know, mark their territory or something and rub their face on it. That's just what happens. I don't know why cats. All right, that's that's one of my photos. Uh, all right, all right. And Vic is trying out a new sewing machine with, is your cat named Annie? Annie Cat? Aw. All right, and of course, she's. it looks like she's sleeping on a quilt. <laughs> awesome. Very nice. All right. All right, this is another photo of Vic's new sewing machine, the Janome Scott. That, that is a really beautiful machine. Woohoo! All right, and your in-laws bought you a sewing table. How awesome. All right, well, I think you'll have a lot of happy hours in the sewing room with this with this baby. All right, we've got a Kamahi 95. Can you believe this quilt is only my second? I'd say I'm picking this whole sewing thing up rather quickly. Yes, and I've talked to her. She's she's quite cool. And uh, yeah, I love what she's doing. How neat. So she's doing some flying geese here. All right, lucky. All right, we have a lot of cats. Okay, hey, look who who's that in the corner? And the cat's like, what the what the heck? Sunday UFO sewing. All right, yes, this kitty, this cat is like, he's very fix. He or she is very fixated on the the sewing machine. I love cat photos. They're so funny. All right, that's another one for me. All right, and this I think we. Let's see here. 
I have not liked this yet. I don't know if we showed this last week, but it looks like Bronte44 is, uh... She got some, some Outlander costumes. Okay, I have not seen the show Outlander, but that... Does, those do look like pretty elaborate costumes there. Very neat. Alright, so I think we've met, all right, so we've officially made it through all the new photos. But yes, if you would like your uh, photos to be featured, feel free to... Let's see here. I, know, I think we showed that last week. I, I Definitely hashtag. Alright, here's one from Doherty. These cute doll dresses for my granddaughter's design a friend doll. Aww. So yes, if you have photos you'd like to share, use hashtag Sword Report Squad, and they may be shown here. You can also use the hashtag so cheap. I will also go through those. And uh, yeah, so definitely feel free to do that if you would like me to feature your photo on a future episode. So yeah, we're just having some fun hanging out. So after this is over, I'm, I, I don't know, I might try to tape something or try to finish something. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so let's see. We got Doherty. She wants to go to the Jane Austen Festival. That sounds like fun. Um, so yeah, anyways, uh, just another a remi another reminder. So next week, there will not be a live show because I will be out of town visiting with family. and uh, But I will definitely be posting a video. So I'll definitely still be doing a video. Um, so just look for here. And, uh, but yeah, this has been a lot of fun. So definitely, and take the poll question. How would you consider your sewing, what level would you consider your uh, sewing skills? But guys, it's been fun again. I will see you two weeks from now. Although you'll, you'll see me next Sunday for sure. And a uh, happy sewing to everybody. And this has been a lot of fun. It's just cool to see what everyone wants to learn or what kind of skills you're into. Um, so that's why we do this. But uh, you guys have a great Sunday, and I will see you in a couple weeks. Yay!